Cabotegavir is an integrase inhibitor, and it is um, unique in that it is a long-acting uh, integrase inhibitor. It's dosed every two months. And so we have studied it both as a treatment in combination with another long-acting agent called ropivirine. And that two-drug combination has successfully uh, kept HIV under control through a number of phase three studies and is approved in many places. We're also developing cabotegavir alone as a drug for HIV prevention. Those studies showed uh, that long-acting cabotegavir was superior to daily oral Truvada for HIV prevention. So in the women's study, 084, it was nine times better than Truvada. In the 083 study, it was three times better than Truvada, in both cases meeting a statistical superiority. Truvada is reported to be 99% effective at preventing HIV through sex. How can you go over 99% if that's true? Truvada uh, is reportedly 99% effective if you take it as prescribed, if you're adherent to it all the time. Efficacy is ultimately how effective is the drug and how well do people take it? Because cabotegavir is really directly observed therapy. You come into the clinic, you get a shot, and then you don't have to think about it anymore for the next two months. So it doesn't require you to remember to take a pill every day. And so that's how you're able to, 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 to demonstrate that much effectiveness. What populations were you able to sample with the clinical trials? For the OA4 study, which was the, the cisgender women study, it was done in sub-Saharan Africa, areas where there's really high rates of HIV infection, particularly in young women. And so it was exactly the population who potentially could benefit the most. In terms of cost, what are we looking at? How available will this be? It is our intention to make cabotegavir available uh, in these least developed countries, particularly focused on PrEP, to make sure that we can allow this medicine to have the game-changing impact that we think that it can have. Speaking of PrEP, uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis, do you see this as a critical tool? How much of a game-changer is this? I think it's a huge game-changer. And so uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis, basically empowering particularly young women to control their own uh, vulnerability, despite the presence of condoms, despite the presence of oral uh, Truvada for PrEP, there continue to be these uh, disturbing numbers. We need to have different tools. And we think this is an important tool because potentially it could be combined with with contraception. So if you could potentially get a young woman in for long-acting contraception, along with long-acting HIV prevention, hopefully you can really make a big difference in the likelihood that she becomes HIV infected in the future. Something like this, where people will get an injection for two months and have this sense of safety, uh, is there a concern that maybe there will be complacency? I think if we can combine widespread availability of long-acting PrEP, along with optimizing treatment, making sure that, you know, everyone knows their status. And so if you are living with HIV, that you're on treatment, and that people who are HIV negative but sexually active, that they would be able to be on, on, on some form of PrEP. We think that adding this new tool will make a big difference. We've seen improvements in the rates of new HIV cases because more people are on treatment, but it hasn't decreased enough to get us to the end of the epidemic. What sorts of uh, side effects have been observed during the clinical trials? Most common side effect uh, is injection site reaction, so soreness at the site where you get the shot that you know typically lasts for a few days and then resolves. What are the plans in making this readily available to populations around the world, including regions like Sub-Saharan Africa? And so we have filed with regulatory agencies around the world. We've already filed in South Africa, for example. We will file in all of the countries that uh, participated in the 083 and 084 studies. Our intent is to get all of those countries uh, filed with reg those regulatory agencies before the end of 22. It is our commitment to do everything that we can to work with the health authorities and with health ministries to make the drugs available. You know, we've spent so much time talking about COVID in the last couple of years. It's almost like we've forgotten about the HIV 
uh, pandemic, it's still here. In the U.S., for example, there were hundreds of thousands less HIV tests done in 2020 in comparison to 2019. So that means people are less likely to get diagnosed or it's just delayed. And that means they're more likely to progress with their own disease. And they're also potentially more likely to transmit to others. 